Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. We get a common question here about launch lugs and rail buttons and rail guides. What's the difference? When should you use one versus the other? Um, so that's what I want to talk about. So why do we use launch lugs at all? Um, so the launch lug is that little tube on the side of the rocket. And the purpose of this is to guide the rocket until the rocket reaches sufficient speed where the fins can stabilize it. You know, on big rockets, they have what's called a gimbaled rocket motor, where they can steer the rocket motor like an outboard motor on a motorboat. But on our model rockets, we don't have anything to steer the rockets except for the fins. So the fins create lift and drag, and they, they are what controls the trajectory of the rocket but they only work at a certain minimum speed. What is that minimum speed? Well, it's really hard to determine, but a good rule of thumb is around 30 miles an hour is when the fins become effective at steering the rocket. So when we launch a rocket, we need the rocket to be going approximately 30 miles an hour by the time um, the fins become effective. And when does that occur? Right when it leaves the launch rod. So this is your typical small launch pad. Um, it has a rod on it and it's eighth inch diameter. And what we do is we put the rocket through uh, the launch rod through that little tube and it slides up and down the rod. So by the time the rocket reaches the end of the rod, it should be going approximately 30 miles an hour. So that's pretty fast. Um, and then the fins can take over. So we know it's going in the right direction by the time it leaves the rod. And now the fins can be effective at stabilizing the rocket and it will keep it going in a straight trajectory. This is why we always, always, always use a launch pad with a model rocket. We never just set the rocket on the ground and launch it from the ground because we don't know which direction it's going to go. Uh, so for small rockets to keep the cost down, we just use that little launch lug. Um, so now on some rockets, you'll see maybe two launch lugs. Um, so typically when you put a launch lug on a rocket, you want to have the position of the lug approximately at the center of gravity of the rocket. So if you balance the rocket, and you always want to do this with a rocket motor installed. So you put your rocket motor in, find that center of gravity where it balances, and then put the launch lug right there. And the reason for that is that's the strongest spot on the rocket. So if the rocket wants to rotate, uh, it's going to rotate around the center of gravity and because that launch lug is there on the center of gravity, that's the strongest spot. So now if it was way up here and it wanted to rotate, it's just going to snap that launch lug right off. Um, a lot of times you'll see two launch lugs put on a rocket. And when you do two launch lugs, you want to put one behind the center of gravity and one in front of it. So on this rocket right here, we have two launch lugs. One's down here, one's up here. I like to put the lowest launch lug as close to the back end as possible. And the reason for this is um, on big rockets, you're going to load the rocket horizontal because the launch rod is so tall. And again, the purpose of that long launch rod is so that the rocket can reach that minimum speed. So that's how you determine how long of a rod you need is that minimum speed. Big rockets, take longer to get up to that minimum speed, so you need a longer rod. Because the rod is longer, it gets harder to put the rocket onto the pad. So we load them horizontally. And then when you load it horizontally, it's easier to find that back launch lug if it's close to the bottom of the rocket. And then put your other one a little bit further forward than the center of gravity. Again, put the rocket motor in, balance the rocket before you put your launch lugs on. So at what point do you go from one size, you know, the small launch lug up to a bigger one? And that depends on the diameter of the rocket. Um, 
So for a small launch pad like this, you're probably gonna be limited to about maybe like a BT60, maybe a BT70 size. Um, at that point, the rocket's gonna take longer to get to the, to the, to the top of the rod. Uh, so you're gonna need longer length. Um, and a skinny rod like this is just not stiff enough to keep the rocket pointed in the direction that we want it to go. So what happens is the diameter increases of the rod. So the next size up from an eighth inch is a quarter inch, and that's this one right here. Um, as you get bigger rockets, um, it, you know, they used to have half inch and one inch rod, uh, but even those rods were very flexible. So the trend nowadays is to go to what's called a launch rail. And I have a rail over here. This is just a short section. Um, typically, uh, they look like this, um, and it's, it'll be eight feet long rather than this little four foot piece right here. Um, and if you look at the end of it, and see if I can get this into camera, um, it has a square section and it has channels on the side. Um, and, and what happens there is we, we put onto the rocket what are called launch buttons. And the launch buttons, um, here's, a, here's a big launch button and you can see that it has a channel on it. And that channel will go into the rail right here. And so this one right here, I can show you, I can put it onto the channels like that. And that's how a launch rail will work. Uh, now you can see that this is much sturdier. You know, you can't even bend this. Um, and that's why we want something big and beefy and, you know, you know that, that has thickness to it because that's gonna keep the rocket going in a straight line, in a straight direction. And the wind is not gonna be able to blow this around if it's fixed in its stand. And this is what holds it into the stand is this rod. And it'll be locked down on this. And so this will be very sturdy. And so the rocket, you know, whatever direction we point it, that's where it's gonna go. The wind is not gonna be able to whip this around and change the direction that the rocket's gonna take off. Um, so at, at some point, you know, these are similar size rockets, you know, and one of them has a launch lug on it. One of them has rail buttons on it. Um, typically, like a, about a three inch diameter rocket is probably going to be a launch rail instead of a launch lug. Uh, but you can get away with it if it's fairly lightweight. Um, the, the thing about big diameter rockets is they become like a sail on a sailboat. They're big. And so any wind that hits them is like a big sail that collects the wind and it wants to push. And so it's going to create a force on the rod and cause, and that's what causes the whip around. Um, you know, when it's sitting on the pad and it's just like rocking around like this, it's because this big area is collecting the wind and it's pushing it around. And so if you don't want that, and you don't, um, that's when you wanna go to a launch button and use the launch rail. Um, now, if your rocket's already built, um, there is the option of putting what's called a rail guide. And basically, this, this kind of has, it's similar to the launch button or the rail button, um, it's just that it's longer and it has a lot of surface area on it. And you can just simply glue this to the outside of your rocket. And again, you're going to want to use two. Um, one near the bottom and then one above the center of gravity um, to put on your rocket. So now you don't have a launch rail. Uh, well, on, on, a, on a rocket like this, you can have a launch buttons on one side and then on the other side you could put a launch lug and so you can do that as well you you know it's totally up to you and on on the catalyst kit that we sell here at apogee it does come with both buttons and a launch lug for that 
for that use. If you're going to go bigger in diameter, such as a four inch diameter rocket, you're probably going to use a launch rail. And so you're going to either use the launch buttons or the rail guides. Now the, the, um, the rail buttons are stronger because they actually go through the, the sidewall of the, the rocket. But um, if the rocket's fairly lightweight, you can still get away with some rail guides. So hopefully that clears up the mystery of launch lugs versus launch rails. In general, if, you can, if there's a launch rail available, use it because it's always stiffer. It's always going to give you a more predictable flight. Um, in, in general, the NAR and Tripoli are moving towards launch rails for everything. Uh, but for small rockets, launch lugs are still going to probably be an option for a long time um, just because launch rails are a bit more expensive. Uh, but if you have the choice, always go with launch buttons or rail buttons or launch guides. So my name is Tim Van Milligan. This is the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.